you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. My name is Daniel McAdams. I'll be hosting the show today because Dr. Paul is in an airplane right now. Uh, today we're going to talk about a very timely topic, as a matter of fact, uh, coincidentally made even more timely by events that have happened today, and this is the Free State Project. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our uh, viewers have heard of this and probably some of them are members or followers of it, but uh, to recap, it's, a, it's a, essentially it's a political migra migration project uh, founded in 2001, started in 2001. The idea is to move a critical mass of people into a low population state, hoping that they can affect uh, the policies of state government and local government in a more libertarian oriented way. Well, the news today is that the uh, Free State Project has reached its minimum threshold of 20,000 people pledging within the next five years to move to the Free State, which in 2003 was selected to be New Hampshire. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, and I'm going to be joined today by Adam Dick, who's a senior fellow at the Ron Paul Institute. Adam's been involved uh, and interested in the Free State Project for some time, so he's going to fill us in a little bit on the project. Adam, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. It's good to be here. Now, before we dive into the Free State Project, uh, before we started the show, you, you mentioned to me that you went to an event last night, and uh, perhaps you just want to give us a couple of seconds on what that was all about. Yes, last night, Dr. Paul spoke, uh, Ron Paul spoke at the University of Texas at Arlington as part of the Maverick series, which is a very prestigious speaker series. Uh, other speakers this year included uh, uh, Jane Goodall and Mia Farrow, and it was a it was a packed audience. They had to open up the balcony as well in the huge auditorium. Uh, Dr. Paul gave a great speech. He started off talking largely about the economy and the Federal Reserve, and then he worked into uh, a significant discussion about foreign policy uh, through a standing ovation at the end and a lot of applause throughout. Um, people came from all over Texas and uh, Oklahoma and nearby states to see the, uh, see the speech, and people seemed to leave very happy. It was, it was a great show. And moment being over are full of beans then, right? <laughs> uh, I, I'd say so. Yeah, I guess you know from your experience, you were down there in, in Houston uh, last weekend. Dr. Paul spoke there at the Mises Institute, and uh, I, as I understand, it went very well as well. Yeah, it was very full, absolutely. So let's, what is the story with the Free State Project, Adam? I know you started talking to me about this back when we were in Dr. Paul's office on Capitol Hill. Uh, I didn't know anything about it, and I know you were very excited about it. So give us a rundown, give us a background, and bring us up to speed where we are now. Sure. Um, a lot of the uh, genesis for the uh, Free State Project started with an article in 2001 that Jason Sorens, who was then uh, working on his Ph.D., wrote, in which he suggested if you move enough people to a smaller state in the United States that uh, they could have a... a, a effect large, be, largely beyond their numbers. And the number that was decided on was 20,000 people moving. And uh, the, then you can really affect policy and the way things are done in the state. So uh, back in 2003, there was an election uh, uh, done by people who expressed interest in the Free State Project to decide which state to focus on. And it was uh, the New Hampshire was chosen from among a number of the smaller population states in the United States. New Hampshire's population is a little over 1.3 million people. And uh, one of the reasons New Hampshire was chosen was that people thought it was more amenable to moving in a libertarian direction because in a lot of ways it was already a more libertarian leaning than were other states. And the, and the population there was more libertarian. So there wouldn't be as much work needed to move it further in the libertarian direction. Uh, so after New Hampshire was chosen, um, what they had to do was bring the number of signers of a pledge up to 20,000 people. And the pledge is pretty serious that people have to sign. It says that they declare their solemn intent to move to New Hampshire with the Free State Project once there are 20,000 other people who have signed. And that once then there, they will take the maximum role of government uh, as protecting the individual's right, right to life, liberty, and property. That's what people will be working for when they move there in the project. Well, now, Adam, in practical terms, what kinds of things realistically do you think could be achieved if even a significant portion of these people have moved? We've heard uh, things that are exciting to us, like joy nullification and other things. 
what, sort of give us a list of what do you think would make the difference if a significant portion of these people did move. Well, I can tell you this, there's already significant things happening in New Hampshire with a small number of people moving. Uh, not everybody waited until the 20,000 number was reached. And as reported in the Concord Monitor last month, 18 early movers with the Free State Project are already in the State House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. That means that they represent 5% of the, of the makeup of that body. While at the same time, the early movers as a percentage of the population of New Hampshire are only 0.15%. Uh, but it's not just in political races that people are making a difference. One thing I wrote about back on January 25th was a lady who had moved to the Free State Project in 2012 served on a jury for a, for a man who was uh, uh, accused of, of uh, marijuana law violations. And she played a role in that jury in ensuring that he had an acquittal. What they did was exercise jury nullification, saying that even though it was what he did was against the law, the jury believed that that law was wrong and should not be enforced in this instance. Exciting thing, you know, if that were to take hold, something certainly to uh, to, to tout and to, 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 to hold on to. But I, I'm thinking sort of um, on a philosophical line, you know, the whole idea of a free state, it's a geographic state, it's a ge geographic entity where people will live with like-minded people. And, you know, thinking about whether this is the way to go, whether geographic proximity is the way to go. You know, other people have looked at uh, expanding and in, in, uh, enhancing their own liberty in different ways. Uh, we know that Bob Higgs and Fred Reed found Mexico the place to go to enhance the personal liberty. Other people, you know, live off the grid here in the U.S. and they can avoid coming into contact with the state as much as possible. And you mentioned the Mises Circle in Houston. Uh, our old colleague Jeff Deist, who's now president of Mises Institute, uh, gave a talk in which he said that he believes that humans have a natural inclination to want to be near people that are like them. Uh, now, I don't know if that extends to, to, to racial or social or political or what have you, but it's interesting. I was reading an article today, this morning, in The Guardian, uh, where the gay community in San Francisco is, is getting very frustrated because you know they have been concentrated in the Castro district and because of gentrification because of rising housing prices and things of that nature their concentration in that district has been diluted significantly over the past few years and they're very unhappy that now they're being forced to live amongst heterosexuals so there is an idea of proximity even among communities like this so I wonder just what your thoughts are philosophically on on the use of geographic proximity to enhance uh, personal liberty. Well, I do think that, that an advantage outside of the politics is, is something that you've kind of touched on there, and that is that uh, libertarians would have many other libertarians nearby if they moved to New Hampshire with which to do social activities and other things. For example, when you move to New Hampshire with the Free State Project, there will be 10, 20, 30 people who will uh, help you unpack your truck and move the things into your house or apartment. And those, you know, and those are people that you'll be able to, to do activities with, have parties, whatever. And uh, it makes the uh, activism for liberty much more fun. Um, when I was looking at the, uh, the numbers projected for the move, um, you know, it'll be one in 65 people in New Hampshire would be free staters if the full 20,000 20, people move. And uh, that can have an incredible influence. I, uh, New Hampshire's size is just 1.3 million, like I said earlier. It's a little smaller than the uh, city population of San Antonio, and uh, where I grew up. And it's just uh, just over overwhelms me to think of the amount of influence that uh, 7,000 or, or 20,000 libertarian activists could have had in my hometown. And and that's the kind of thing that could happen in New Hampshire. But it won't just be the activism; it'll be fun and uh, to have people to uh, share camaraderie with who have a lot of common interest. Where, where, where would you see, if this is successful even to a degree, where would you see, say let's look 10 years into the future, what do you think it will look like in New Hampshire? Well, I think 10 years in the future there will be, uh, you know, New Hampshire's already a low tax state. It doesn't have a, a tax on wages, but I could see them uh, eliminating taxes further. On the local level, um, the property taxes are, are rather high, and that would be an area to address, to lower the property taxes. 
Uh, New Hampshire has uh, better homeschool laws in many states, but it's not as uh, free willing as the homeschool laws in, say, Wisconsin or Texas. Mm -hmm. So I can see dramatic changes there. That's something a lot of the families that are moving are focusing on. Um, on the drug war, New Hampshire uh, doesn't imprison people quite, quite nearly as much as many states do for drug law violations, uh, but it has not yet legalized marijuana like a few states have. Definitely within 10 years we'll see that. But if a lot of libertarians move there, New Hampshire could be the state that really moves beyond marijuana and just says all drugs are legal, which would be a huge step that uh, doesn't look like it's very close in any states right now. That's very interesting. Adam, uh, final question. We're going to have to close it out in a second, but it sounds like you might be ready to pack your bags over there uh, in, uh, uh, in, from Texas where you are. Is, are you looking at uh, New Hampshire as a future locale for, for the Dick family? Hey, it might be. Uh, I've been interested all, all along since when I first heard about it in 2001 or two. As soon as it was announced that New Hampshire was the state, I went to the first libertarian, big libertarian meeting in the state after that announcement in 2003. It was a state convention of the Libertarian Party. And then a few years later in 2007, I went to the New Hampshire um, uh, uh, Liberty uh, meeting in, uh, in uh, Concord, where, where Dr. Paul, it turned out, gave his uh, first campaign speech of the 2008 election. And I've been back there for vacation in the Lakes region uh, once since with a family that my family met when we were at the uh, Concord meeting. Um, but there are two big meetings coming up in New Hampshire that anybody interested can attend and, and see if they, uh, if they find it to be a project they'd be interested in taking part in. One takes place in Man Manchester later this month, and the other is the uh, Pork Fest in, uh, in the summer, in June. And uh, both of those you can find information about on the Free State Project's website. All right. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Adam. Uh, appreciate your insights into this. Uh, to our audience, this may be something worth taking a look at, seeing if it's something that might interest you. Certainly, philosophically, there's an appeal to this. Uh, but I do want to thank you all for tuning in to the Liberty Report today. Remember, you can follow all our shows very easily by subscribing youtube.com backslash Ron Paul Liberty Report. Let's push that subscriber base way, way up. Thanks again for joining us. See you next time on the Liberty Report.